Hello and welcome to my video outlining the construction of my vibration isolation stage for my electric drum kit. The biggest issue with this kit was the vibration coming from the bass drum pad and the hits across the toms which could be heard by my neighbours. I wanted to build a stage for my kit but the types I've seen were too unreliable in design made from balancing wood on half quick tennis balls. After which I stumbled across a video on YouTube by Vdrum Tips. The isolation stage constructed in this video was the most sophisticated type I had seen. After contacting Vdrum Tips about the stage, I decided to go ahead with the build, but a slightly different build to the one in his video. This is the Silamir 11 used. This is a weight specific elastomere. This means that if the weight being applied to it is too light or too heavy, the pads won't absorb the vibrations. This is why it is crucial that all weight is considered when compiling your data. It is typically used in industry as vibration insulation for under train tracks, buildings and any other sources of unwanted vibrations. Here is a short clip demonstrating its high absorption capabilities. I chose plywood for my stage. This was a cut to order purchase from a builder supplier. I went to a local furniture store and bought some carpet off cuts. This was an ideal inexpensive way to line the top of the stage. The staple gun and adhesive were bought at a local hardware store. I had also downloaded an app from the Play Store that measures vibrations. This was used just as a rough guide to visualise what kind of vibrations could be sensed throughout the floor before and after the stage was put into place. I had placed the phone in numerous positions and played soft and heavy to see what the difference, if any, could be recorded. So the first thing I did was I cut the carpet to measure. I left a border of 100ml of carpet around the board. The board was then lifted and the adhesive was applied to it. The board was then placed back down on the carpet. The edges of the exposed carpet were then rolled around the board and stapled down to it. This was done the whole way around. I applied more adhesive just around the corners to give extra support. Once I had the carpet applied to the board and the adhesive dried, the total weight of the upper stage could be measured. Determining the weight is one of the most crucial parts of this. Again, if the weight is too light or too heavy, the cylinder won't work. Determining the weight of everything could be difficult given the size and shape of some of the components of the kit. Fortunately, I had some help from my employer, Mason Technology. They lent me some equipment, a Metla Toledo balance and a calibrated F1 weight set. With this, I could be certain that everything would be weighed with high accuracy. And remember, never touch calibrated weights with bare hands. Once I had the balance set up, I could commence weighing all the components of the kit. Using the Cinemir calculator downloaded from the VDrum Tips website, I systematically went through the list and edited the file so that it was relevant to me. Once I had the weights recorded, the pad size could be determined and it was time to cut the pads to the appropriate lengths. The pads were somewhat difficult to cut through. Care had to be taken so that the pads were cut to the right size. The area of the pad needed was outlined on the pad and cut. Once the pads were cut, they were placed into position on the boards. I chose to place one in each corner of the upper stage and one in each corner of the lower stage, with one in the middle. Nine pads in total were used. Once I had all the pads on the boards, it was time to get the stage assembled and into position. I placed the upper stage on the lower stage and aligned them so that their edges were flush. All in all, the stage was a complete success. I performed a test with my neighbours and they said they couldn't hear anything. The result from the vibration recording app shows some information. No vibrations are recorded for me rocking on the stool, as with my stage, you sit off it. This is good if you don't have a lot of space to play with for a full stage that you sit on. The next two screenshots are recordings of me using a double pedal and playing very heavy. You can see some vibration across the timeline. The final slide is me playing with double pedal. Minimal vibrations are recorded and none that could be heard by my neighbours. The cost of the material can be seen below. This is by no means a cheap solution, but it is a reliable one. One that's worth investment if you want to play peacefully and uninterrupted and not interrupting your neighbours as well. So there you have it. Thanks for watching my video. Be sure to like and share. If you have any questions or comments, write them down below and I'll get back to everyone as soon as I possibly can. Special thanks to Vdrum Tips for all his advice and Mason Technology. Right, thanks and goodbye.